Hey guys, what's up? It's Malcolm Zonkey, and welcome to my Player on Ports guide. Hopefully, for those of you that are new to ports, this guide will help you gain an understanding of exactly how to go about the minigame. Also, if you already grasp the basics and just kind of want to know how to get your Tetsu as fast as possible, um, use the skip link in the description below to skip ahead to the basic Tetsu strategy, which isn't going to be anything mind-blowing, but if you have absolutely no clue what you're doing to get the armor, um, it might be somewhat helpful to you. Before you can start ports, you do need at least level 90 in one of these nine requirements. Now there are nine adventurers and ports that you will be attracting uh, and what skills you have decide what adventures you're attracting. For example, if you have level 90 fishing, you will be attracting a whaler which can give you missions for certain trade goods. In the whaler's case it's plate which is used to make the tetsu that he specializes in. And for example if you have 90 herblore you will attract the biologist. You only need level 90 to one of these skills to start ports and even if you don't have the level 90 skill in the kind of trade good that you want from the specific adventure you want, it's still better to start ports sooner rather than later because when you first start ports there's a lot of missions that aren't going to be very rewarding but you have to get them done to get on to the later regions where you'll find more rewarding missions. So the moral of the story is the sooner you start the better. You will also need some additional requirements to craft the things that you can get from ports. You will need 93 cooking to cook the rocktail soups, 90 smithing to make the tetsu armor, 90 crafting to make the death lotus armor, 90 rune crafting to make the sea singer armor, and 95 fletching to make all of the scrimshaws. However, some of the scrimshaws have a lower fletching requirement. You will also need 92 fletching to make the death lotus darts if that's something you're looking forward to. And not listed here are the requirements to wear the armor, which you need 85 HP and 85 defense to wear the armors. So even though you don't need these skills right away when you start ports, it might be wise, for example, if you're going to Tetsu, to just keep that 90 smithing off in the distance because you will need it in a couple months when you have all the plate to make your full Tetsu. Player on ports is really quite simple. The general idea of the entire activity is to send your ships on voyages so you can collect resources so you can both upgrade your crew, the buildings around the port itself, and your ships, and all the stuff on your ships that's going to be making them more effective at carrying out voyages. So the first thing you really want to look into when you're doing ports is the ships itself and your crew and the voyages that you're going to be sending them on. You will start with a decent amount of crew from the tutorial, but how you get more of them is you want to go into the crew roster. This will bring up an interface where you'll have a captain that you can hire for a certain amount of chimes. The higher chime cost that captain has, the better that captain is going to be. I would not recommend buying cheap captains, but rather holding out until you find a captain that costs around 5,000 or even 10,000 chimes. The more expensive captains are far more common as you progress into later regions. And you also have three crew available and you'll also be getting 15 crew rerolls a day so if you don't have the type of crew member that you want you can reroll them like so until you get the one that you really want and also these crew members are going to start with base traits but they will level up over time as you do voyages with them and they'll get stronger. Every single region will unlock new crew members but also the crew members will cost resources from those regions so you will need to do voyages with your old crew members from the previous region to get the resources to hire the new crew members which is why it's important to level up your crew so you're going to be able to do voyages not only from the region you're currently in but also the region that you're going to be progressing in in the future. Voyages can also be rerolled just like crew members if you can't find one that's easy enough for you. If your crew isn't high level enough to complete a voyage, for example, when you go into a new region you want an easier one, you can also reroll the voyages as well or until you find one that you really want. There are two types of voyages. There are standard voyages and special voyages. The special voyages can include story missions, they can give you trade goods, or they can give you large amounts of resources. All of these are pretty handy to complete, especially because the resource missions from the special voyages usually have a much lower requirement than a standard voyage would have for the same amount of resources. The story missions are important because they're a trimmed completionist cape requirement and also allow you to unlock future story missions later on in the storyline, which will give large amounts of trade goods as reward. And of course, you can just give regular, get regular trade good missions from the special missions, which can give you plate, chi, lacquer, or all sorts of other kinds of trade goods. So when you find a voyage that you want to complete, you want to make sure that your ship is prepared to actually go on that voyage and have the necessary amount of crew to complete it with the highest amount of success chance. As you can see with this voyage that I have selected, I only have 36% success chance because to have a 100% success chance, I need to have a total of 1,200 morale on this specific voyage. 
Now, I am not going to have a very high chance of succeeding this mission, and if you fail, your crew members can die, or you can just have your ship broken and in need of repairs, both of which aren't pleasant things, so we want to edit this ship to make sure we have a better chance of completing this voyage. So when we go to edit ship, this is a combat-related mission, so we want combat-related um, crew members accompanying us. Uh, us on this vision. Currently I have morale all on my ship, but I can swap this out for combat at any time. So I just want to make sure I equip a whole bunch of combat members, and this will make the voyage much more likely to succeed. Another thing that you can do to make voyages more likely to succeed is equip specific things on the ship that in can increase your stats. For example, you can equip deck items such as cannons, rigging, or items that increase your morale, and these can be upgraded later on with more resources as well. As you can see, buying this small crate of riches will increase my morale 450 instead of 200, which my current item I have equipped is, but it also costs 800 chimes and 300 gunpowder to unlock, and I'd rather spend that gunpowder on crew members at the moment, so I'm going to hold off on that because it's only a marginal increase in morale. These can be worth it to buy, just be aware that you're going to unlock more of these with every single new region that you explore and I'll go into exploring new regions a little bit more later but it might be a wise idea to save your resources or to spend them on something different instead of pouring them into the ship upgrades or even the crew upgrades sometimes if you can get along with worse ship or crew. So with all this talk about exploring new regions, what is exploring a new region and how do you do it? So if we click on this icon here, it'll open up the archipelago map and as you can see if you hover over this, I'm currently in the skull region which is going to be on the left hand side of this map. It also says 37% to the next zone. So with every mission that you send your ships on, you will increase a small amount in your distance and that will progress your progression towards the next zone. So each zone takes longer and longer to unlock, so you'll have to send your ships on more and more voyages to eventually reach the next zone. And also every time you reach the next zone, you unlock a new type of resource. The current zone that I'm in gives gunpowder when I complete missions, the standard missions anyway. And when I unlock the next region and send my ships on voyages in the next region, I will get slate instead of gunpowder. And this will also be used to purchase the next tier of troops and also the next tier of ship upgrades. You will need to stock up on trade goods mostly from special missions and story missions, but a few from regular missions as well as you get farther on into ports. And these, the armor that you can get, the Tetsu, the Death Lotus, and the Sea Singer, costs a lot of trade goods. You'll need plate for the Tetsu, you'll need lacquer for the Death Lotus, and you'll need chi for the Sea Singer. And the main way that you want to get these is by waiting until later areas. And so you want to get to the later areas as fast as possible by doing as many missions as you can. In the later areas, you will get many more trade goods per mission, which makes it a lot faster to unlock this armor. The final thing that I haven't discussed yet that you really need to be getting from some of your special missions is scrolls. I, unfortunately, on this account have not unlocked any scrolls yet, but you will get scroll missions fairly often. And your scro the scroll missions are all the same, you will just get a scroll for doing it, and what scroll that happens to be depends on what scroll you have selected in this interface, it's under the port management. Um, and you want to unlock the armor first, the Tetsu, the Death Lotus, the Sea Singer, whichever one you want to prioritize first, whichever combat style is most important to you, and then you can move on to unlocking scrimshaws, which either can be used for good effects for your own personal use, or you can even make the tradable version and sell them on the GE for some profit, and then you can also unlock other special things such as Rocktail Soup, the Leviathan Ring, the Reef Walker's Cape, and the Death Lotus Starts. Before you can craft an item, you need to find all four of the scroll pieces, so to craft a full set of armor, you will need to find 12 scroll pieces in total. So before you can make yourself your full Tetsu, you do need to find 12 scrolls, and you need to individually select the Tetsu Helm. Once that's finished, we move on to the body, and then the legs. So you do have to have that done before you can collect all your plate and make the Tetsu. Now that we've discussed voyages and how to do them, let's move on into the other things that Ports has to offer. First of all is a weekly D&D that you can do, which is called Meg. You just talk to Meg, and every week you can help her out by answering some questions. A really good way to answer the questions is you can look up on the RS Wiki. I will leave a link to this in the description, but it has the, ans the best answers for all of Meg's questions so you can get the best possible reward for her. And every single time you do this, she will arrive on Wednesday at the reset time of most D&Ds. She'll give you a treasure chest, and inside will be a lamp and some coins. How much XP you get depends on your level. This particular one gave me 8.7k Hunter XP, but the answers I gave her the previous time I did this weren't very good. Once you've answered all of her questions, she'll disappear, and she'll be back the next week to give you more rewards. Now we'll go through building by building to see what each one has to offer. If you go to the upgrade building screen, you can upgrade all of the buildings and ports. How 
However, they will cost resources to do this, so you will need to farm some regions before you can. The first building here in the upgrade screen is the bar, and this will have a higher chance to attract captains and also adventurers, uh, which are the people that give you better story missions. I wouldn't worry about the bar too much. I managed to get all my captains fairly quickly without upgrading my bar at all. However, if you find that is an important thing to do, it's your preference. The next building is the office. This one's very important to upgrade as it unlocks more ship slots. You can upgrade the office twice other than the one time that you upgraded during the tutorial when you first entered the ports. And this will get you two more ships. As you can see under my ship screen, I have two ships here and also two empty slots which where ships are going to be in the future once these have been unlocked. You will have to farm, go back and farm the first region a bit for some more bamboo as you won't get all of this bamboo um, just by completing the first region. Once you move on to the second region, you won't have enough, but it's definitely worth it for that extra ship as you can do extra voyages per day. The next uh, building here is the workshop. Um, what you can do in the workshop is once you upgrade this, there will be a bank inside, which is really handy. And also you have to upgrade it at least one time. Uh, to be able to craft the armor there will outside the workshop once you upgrade it there will be an anvil and a crafting table and also a range where you can cook rocktails and make your armor and all that stuff um, and also a place where you can craft your scrimshaws so you do have to upgrade this once and after that um, upgrading it increases its look the next building here is the lodgings um, you can upgrade this one to attract a higher quality crew again I wouldn't really worry about this one too much you can get your crew fairly easily just through some rerolls and during a couple days of patience um, so upgrading the lodgings is not terribly important the next one here is the shipwright if you upgrade this one it just boosts your ship stats um, by a small amount it's worth it since most of the upgrades here are fairly cheap and the next building is going to be the warehouse if you upgrade this one it will boost your rewards depending on what region you're in so if you're going to be spending a lot of time in one region and you'll gain more resources than the ones you spent to upgrade the warehouse then it's definitely worth upgrading the next thing that you can build is totem hotspots and this will increase your chance of finding specific kinds of special voyages you won't need to worry about these right away as you can see it costs a large amount of resources that are found in later regions so initially you can't do this but they do give you special effects such as for example the first one has a higher chance of receiving scroll voyages the next one is a higher chance of receiving XP voyages and the next one increases your amount of resources for a voyage so these are more things that you want to worry about in the later game the final things that you can upgrade in ports are the icons and these just these just have a higher chance of attracting specific adventurers. This can be useful in some situations, for example if you want to get the Tetsu armor as fast as possible, um, upgrading to attract the whaler adventurer is going to have a higher chance of increasing him. Um, this particular account does not have 90 fishing which you need for the whaler adventurer so it cannot attract the whaler adventurer, um, but if you have that uh, you can attract it more commonly. You can also do this with other adventurers if you want to. Uh, get other specific trade goods um, more fast from their storyline missions. The only other things that ports has to offer is first you can trade the trader here over in the eastern part of the ports and he offers you deals every day where you can buy trade goods for certain resources and the resources that it costs are random um, but if you have a large stockpile of one resource for example I have a huge stockpile of stainless steel and really nothing to spend it on. It, when he eventually gives out a stainless steel upgrade I will just go ahead and pick up whatever trade goods he's offering. Also, if you come over to the western part, there is a black marketeer, and you can view the goods and buy some stuff for real world money, or real game money, I should say. Um, first of all, like today, he's offering chimes, which wouldn't be the most handy, but if you just entered a new region and he's offering resources from that new region, uh, it might be handy to come and pick some up. Also, if you fail a voyage and it says you have to have, you have to wait one hour for the ship to complete repairs, you can also repair it immediately for either 20k or 40k um, from the black marketeer, which is really nice which means you don't have to wait to send out your voyages in ports so the general strategy if you want either tetsu sea singer or death lotus armor as fast as possible is you want to get to the sixth region as fast as possible so do as many voyages as you can per day and you can get to the sixth region in about three months if you do at least uh, three or four voyages a day um, when you're in the initial few regions and then later on you can't do as many voyages a day because the voyages take longer to complete so you can only do like two sets of voyages a day but as long as you do that in about three months time you will get to the sixth region and you also want to make sure that you're doing the storyline missions in your special missions for the adventures specifically 
specifically the whaler um, because they will give you large amounts of plate rewards later on in the mission and eventually you will get a trio mission from completing enough storylines where you'll get 50 plate in one mission and that will go a long way towards completing your tetsu armor the only other thing i'd recommend to watch out for is if you do want to make money once you get to the later regions and you've unlocked all your armor and you really need nothing else from ports uh, look out for ancient bone missions because you can get eight ancient bones and also if you have merchants that you purchased which can give you extra resources if you have them equipped um, on a voyage you can get 10 ancient bones in one mission and you can sell some of the scrimshaws for about 700k to 1 mil each so just doing one mission for 700k to 1 mil is a really nice profit especially later on in the game um, where you can attract adventures more easily by building totems and such. Anyway, that's about all for the player and ports guide. Hopefully I helped you guys understand exactly how this mini game works and it can be fun and also very profitable at later levels, um, earning up to a few mil a day for hardly any work at all. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, if there's anything that wasn't entirely clear, please leave it in the comments and I'll try my best to answer them. Farewell.